Well, thanks for uh, coming back, checking out this video. This will be on my CMP 1911. We're going to do a detailed strip and uh, then assembly. Uh, I'm going to kind of skip over the uh, field stripping and we're going to go straight into the detailed. Um, if you don't know how to field strip, please review my other video. Uh, that'll get you more of an idea. So, of course, uh, before I dig into any weapon, I'm going to make sure it's clear. Mag catch, there's nothing there. Nothing in the mag well. I'm going to go ahead and lock it to the rear. Finger check, we're all good to go. Alright, so we'll do a quick field strip breakdown. And if you want more details on the field strip, I am going quickly, but uh, I figure if you're going to watch this video, you probably already have a knowledge of that. Alright, so... Now we've got all major components all separated. Um... So I'm going to go ahead and put aside the stuff that doesn't come apart any further. Alright, so here's our two, our uh, slide and our frame. Let's go ahead and disassemble the slide. So, it's got the extractor, firing pin, and firing pin block retaining block and on the firing pin is a spring. So what you do depress the firing pin and slide that block out of the way. Now make sure when you're sliding out of the way keep your finger in the way to catch that spring because it's going to pop out of there. See? Now we got that out. You can pull these two apart if you want. Then you got the whole deal there. And on this slide, you can see that the serial number was stamped on the back side. Now, to get the extractor out, sometimes they just slide right out, sometimes they do not. It is curved slightly, so it may not want to come out. So, what I did was I just caught the bottom edge of it with my pen. And I was able to pull up on it. Now once it's to this point, you can just pull it out. So there you go. There's your extractor. See it has a bend in it. That's what retains it in there. Along with the uh, firing pin retaining block. Now if you look on the front side here, you see this hole? You see the hole right there? That is where the extractor comes out. So it is visible right there. And you can see mine is a little dirty. It's got some brass on it. Alright, so next step we're going to take the frame apart. And the frame is the bulk. It's going to be the bulk of this video really. Um, this is where most of the parts live and uh, it's the most time consuming. So uh, to get to some of the stuff or to make access easier, we're going to go ahead and take off the stocks. So they're held in place with two screws. I went ahead and popped that one loose. Into the bowl, and then I'll pop this one loose.
sometimes they don't want to pop out so I can put my finger and they're actually it's actually hollow in the middle here so you put your finger in the back and uh, pop it out as you see there's a big hole right there it's easier than trying to monkey with it trying to grab an edge you can just pop it off like that so let's go ahead and take the other one off okay all right so pop that loose and we're all good to go now these are side specific you will see that there's a cutout on one of them of course I mean of course you can't you can't install them backwards no way you could but it would look funny wouldn't it all right anyway there's a cutout for one for the uh, magazine release to move in and out and then there's a cutout for the spring up at the top there so let's dig a little deeper all right so next we're going to take off the mainspring housing um, see this has a divot on this side and it's rounded on the other um, you have to push this way and drive that out but first we're gonna put the hammer forward so make sure you ride it forward because you don't want it to smack the frame that's gonna relieve a little bit of pressure on the back I'll take my pin punch and just tap it through with the hammer so we've driven it through Now this will slide off the back because it rides in that groove right there. There's one on each side. All right, that's your uh, mainspring housing. I'm gonna put that aside with the pin. Should I put the pin over here? All right, and so we'll continue on up here. I get the safety out. Oh, spring wants safety spring wants to come out right now, so we'll just take the safety spring out. And we'll go ahead and move on to getting the safety out. And this safety holds. Safety holds the, the beaver tail in. So what I had to do was find the happy spot where the hammer is going to allow the safety to pull out so we can get the beaver tail off. And it's not all the way back and it's not all the way forward, so you're going to have to somewhere in the middle. And now it looks like, all right, so, so it was right about... Yeah, anyway, you saw it when I got it, it was about half cocked. That'll allow us to take the safety off, the beaver tail, or grip safety. Now, we're going to have to see if I can get the hammer out. These two pins right here. On mine are very loose. If I flop it over, they will both fall out. Uh, the top one is retaining the hammer. The middle one, or the smaller one, is uh, retaining the sear and the disconnector. So I'll take put, cover my cover that one up. And I'll drop this one out. And then we got the hammer that just fell out. So the hammer is retained by this. This pin has a uh, larger head on it, so it can only go one way, you see. And 
And now we're left with something that looks like that. So you've got our sear and uh, disconnector. So the, this part is the sear and this part is the disconnector. The disconnector comes all the way through up to here. So it rides right in that hole. And this is the back side of it. And this right here is the back side of the uh, trigger. So when you pull the trigger, you can see that it moves all those parts. So to take that out, simply give it a couple taps, that pin falls out, and that will release your disconnector and your sear which they orient like this inside the uh, weapon so they sit just like that and the pin goes right through there but it's going to ride on that side Okay. Right, so we got those two parts. Now next up we're going to take the uh, magazine release off. To do this you're going to need a small screwdriver that will fit this screw. You have to depress the magazine release. So we're going to push that down and you see that this raises up. And you go on with the screwdriver and you just turn until it clicks. Now you see that there is no pressure on it. And when I push on this other side, this piece just comes right out. Okay, so it's all one piece. And you can see it, it's all gone from the weapon. So. Alright. Um, that allows the trigger to come out. So, as you see, it's loose now. It should just slide right out. can pull out the slide stop sponge plunger spring and catch so all this comes apart but all you need to really remember is the big end goes towards the safety and the small end goes All the way inside so it would orient about like that so what I have here is the mainspring housing the spring is captured inside on a pin and uh, what holds it all together is this pin right here which is you push this pin through this way um, and I'll kind of show you what you need to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got this pin in here right here. I'm going to push down on this to relieve the pressure and then push through to get this pin out. So I'm pushing down. Push through. Hopefully Catch it in my hand, which I did, and there we go. There's the mainspring. So the pin that's holding it in, and then you got the mainspring right there.
All right, so to reassemble the mainspring, I, I forgot to video it, but all I did was press down on that punch again in the vise, and uh, this was under no force. I just slid it in and uh, captured it. All you have to do is make sure that you get that far enough in. So let's go ahead and reassemble. So to reassemble, make sure you have your trigger. Uh, with the f angled surface this direction, you're going to slide that in the back. Should fall in. You'll know you have it the right way if it lines up with uh, the rest of the frame there. Actually, I don't know if you could put it upside down or not. Let's give it a try. Nope, it won't let you put it in upside down. So you only put it in one way. All right, so there you go. I'm going to go ahead and put the safety spring and plunger back in. Get the fuzz out of there. All right. So you see the smaller part there, the larger part there. All right, so next up, let's put the magazine release back in here. You have to push up on this, so I'll just, I just have my finger underneath there, so that it's raised out of there just a little bit. You have to push down on the so you're pushing down on the screw, and I turned it to the right or the uh, clockwise direction. So, and now it's captured back in there. And our trigger is captured in there too. All right, so let's go ahead and put sear in the disconnect. So this is the disconnect. This is the sear. They're going to go together just like that. All right, so just like that. And they will go up into that hole. There we go. Just like that. You take the smaller pin, put it in the smaller hole there. And what I do is I'll just uh, pull the trigger a couple times and jiggle it around and that will go into the right place and now that's all good. And you put your hammer in. Put the larger pin. And that just falls right in too. Then we'll put the uh, safety spring in. You see it's got hooks on each end. Uh, one hook goes into that slot at the back. The other hook just rests up on the sear area up there. Now there is a little trick to keep this in place without it going all over the place. And that's just to slide in your mainspring. So it's not all the way in, but it's in far enough that um, this isn't going to move around. If you try putting the grip safety in without this sitting in there, it's going to twist. It's going to keep turning and twisting uh, because it'll catch on this little finger sticking up and it will make things a lot harder. So I'm going to make sure that goes down. I'm going to slide the grip safety in. So that all lines up. This is kind of a part where you, you want like 10, 10 hands, but I'm, I'm sure you will get it here. All right, so now you see, <laughs> that's what I mean, you want like 10 hands for it. Uh, there we go. All right, so now that we got that back together, my camera died. Um, anyway. We've got everything held together again. 
this little plunger is in the way of the safety. So what I do is I get my um, tool here and we just push that plunger in. You can see it goes right in there. Sometimes you might have to play with the hammer a little bit for it to go all the way in. But we still got everything squared away right there. Next step we're going to have to do is get that pin to go into the plunger hole. So remember on the uh, spring assembly, you got the plunger. Well, now you got to get this pin into that divot right there. And then you also have to keep these two from uh, ending up on the outside there. And this spring wants to jump out of here. So let's slide this in before it disappears. Alright, so we got that all captured in there. So what I'll do is I'll rotate it on its back here. And hopefully the pin will end up in the right place. All right. Looks like it's getting there. Or is it there? Yep. And looks like it's getting caught on a little lip in there. Maybe to make this a little easier, I'll put the hammer all the way forward. That'll put the least amount of pressure on that. And there we go. That's what it was. I had the hammer slightly back. So, so now we got that. We gotta drive that pin in. So, remember we have that all lined up. I'm going to drive it in this way, so it'll be across. I'm going to take my brass punch, push it down, should hold it in place, and uh, there's a little, the lower part of the uh, spring there captures that pin in place. So now we've got the lower all put back together, which um, you can see that that pin can go in either side. It's just you drive it through uh, with the rounded side going in and you drive it out that way. So anyway, now we've got that all put back together. Let's move on to putting the grips back on. So the grips are pretty self-explanatory. There you go. And put these screws back in there. Hope this video is helpful. If you guys have any tips that I'm missing, go ahead and put it in the comments. I'm not above learning more because I am by far from an by far not an expert. So, all right, let's go ahead and assemble the slide again. Put the extractor into his home right there and then uh, this groove is going to line up with the groove on the inside right here right there so that we can slide the plate firing pin uh, block back in there so and what you may have to do is pull back on it just a little bit to get it all the way in because it is on a curve we're going to line that up best we can. This particular one sticks out just a hair 
I have seen them sit flush. I have seen them sit a little out. Just looks like the length of the, the extractor is a little long. Put the spring back on the firing pin. Slide that back in. Push that down. Let's see. Let's get screw. Let's get my pen again, huh? That worked pretty good last time. Put my pen down there. So round side up. Slide that into that groove that I showed you. And we got the firing pin captured. All you got to do is push it all the way up in there. And we're good to go on there. The slide is assembled. All right, so now we're back at the field strip configuration. Um, I will go ahead and just quickly put this back together, though you could watch the whole field strip video. Uh, to get the specifics. Put everything back together. All right. That actually looks like the spring was the other way around, eh? Yeah, see? There we go. So we got that hole lined up there. Just gonna drop this down there again. Slide this forward, put the safety on. Push that down. And we're back. Alright guys, hope you had a good time and I hope this helped you out. Um, if you've got any suggestions or comments or uh, things you'd like me to cover more, uh, go ahead and put it down in the comments. Uh, this should work with uh, all 1911, 1911A1s. Um, what it won't work with is a Series 80 which has a few extra safety parts in it. Um, anyway, uh, the next video up is going to be a detailed um, kind of parts breakdown of manufacturers and stuff like that on uh, this uh, military rebuild so that I got from CMP anyway if you guys liked it give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if uh, I could do anything better like I said put it down in the comments below see you guys next time